What's up guys, it is Dan from Fightwave and today I'm absolutely excited to bring on somebody I've been wanting to speak with for quite some time now. If you know me, you know that I'm a fan of Australian MMA and today's guest is no exception to the pecking order. In my opinion, one of the biggest trailblazers on the women's mixed martial arts front in Australia who's facing Olena Kaleshnik on the upcoming Bellator Champions Series card and in my opinion has the makings of somebody who could be making a push for the Bellator featherweight title. I'm privileged to be joined by, you know, the one, the only, Sarah Collins. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Hey, that was quite the introduction. Thank you. A little bit of a little bit of stutters, but, you know, it's just a late night jitters. But, Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Privileged to sit here and speak with you. How's everything been? Um, everything's been pretty good. Uh, this fight camp's probably been the best fight camp I've ever had. Um, I don't have any uni at the moment, no work, nothing, just concentrating on the fight. So it's been really good. No, yeah, definitely. And, you know, this fight with Olena Kaleshnik, a fight that I feel like, you know, when we talk about Bellator's 145-pound division, it's one of the more exciting fights on the card, in my opinion. And your opponent, your pedigree of opponents, I feel like just with every fight you've taken, the bar continues to be up higher and higher. Talk to me a little bit about Olena as an opponent and just the excitement of a new challenge to kickstart, I think, your first fight in the Bellator PFL merger era. Um, yeah, so I think Elena is going to be um, a tough opponent. She uh, doesn't back down and she keeps going. Um, I try not to watch too much of uh, her fight videos just because I feel like it gets in my own head when I watch my opponent too much. Um, but I think she's going to be tough. Uh, I think she's going to try. She's going to be out there for the whole 15 minutes if we are. And she's going to keep going. Um, I think the new, uh, yeah, this is my first fight with uh, PFL, Bellator um, combined. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what's different and what's the same, what works well. Um, yeah, it'll be, be fun. No, yeah, definitely. And, you know, not to mention the talent pool. I feel like for you, you're always open to testing yourself against newer, bigger, and better opponents. And the talent pool right now with the merger, I think, benefits the women extremely at 145 with them having the more, uh, you know, the heavier weight classes, the 145 to 155 pound women coming down, some of them. And just the overall divisions combining to make a really talented pool of women that are fighting for both promotions. Talk to me a little bit about that and just the prospect of fighting some of these women. You know, you you talk about the the Leah McCourts, the Sinead Kavanaugh's, who you've, you've already fought, to the Olena Kolesniks, the Larissa Pacheco's, just the, the slew of talent that's come in as a result of this merger. Yeah, so definitely uh, PFL, Bellator now have the biggest, best um, uh group of 145 women in the world um nowhere else has uh the range that they have like ufc doesn't even really have a 145 division anymore um and yeah so i think this is the place to be if you are 145 and it's exciting times no yeah definitely and you know sarah from your start in mixed martial arts from your start rise up the pro ranks i feel like one thing that's really stood out to me is just the impact that we've seen the women of Australia have on the regional scene in Australia, you know, from me, when you started to maybe now, the growth has been exponential in the entirety of the scene. And I feel like you, amongst a lot of other women in Australia, have had a part to play in that. What's it been like for you to see just the love that the women have been getting in Australia, you know, with Eternal having a, you know, vacant flyweight title bout between, you know, Amina Hadaya and Jacinta Austin, Lisa Kiriakou just coming off a road to UFC bout, you know, so many other amazing women getting opportunities. What do you make of just this growth and evolution in Australia? Um, I think it's awesome. It's I love watching um, girls' fights. I hate it when there's a local card and there's no girl fights on there. Um, but, yeah, it's so good to see all the girls um, getting big fights in bigger promotions. Um, tomorrow, Jacinta versus um, Amina is going to be a great fight. Can't work, wait to tune in for that one. Um, and, yeah, I think it's just awesome that Australian women are finally getting um, some bigger, better fights. No, yeah, definitely. And, you know, just out of curiosity, what's your what's your prediction on the fight tomorrow between Amina and Jacinta, if you don't mind sharing for the audience? Um, I think Jacinta's going to win. Yeah, that's that seems to be the dissenting opinion, just the, the experience of what not a lot of people leaning towards Jacinta. But regardless, a really fun fight. And, you know, we talk about that evolution in the scene, you know, from a time where the women's talent pool was maybe uh, five to ten women at very best. And now you've got multiple budding and growing divisions sprouting like flowers. You know, what do you make of just that evolution in just seeing... You know, from a point in time where the talent pool wasn't as big as it is to now there's a slew of, you know, female amateur prospects 
rising up into the pro ranks and, you know, you kind of having an imprint in part of that. You know, you see women like Casey O'Neill, yourself, Megan Anderson, Arlene Blanco, just naming a lot of them. I apologies if I missed anyone who have been able to kind of trailblaze the sport in Australia. What's it meant for you to have a small part, but a very pivotal part in being able to do your part and growing the sport in Australia? Oh, uh, I don't feel like I've had any part, but it, um, it's good to see, like, the more women, the better, like, more fights, more opportunities. Um, I really struggled to get fights when I was fighting locally. I think I fought, like, once a year for three years and just really struggled to get fights. So I feel like now there's heaps more women around, and the more fights they get, the better their records look and the um, more opportunities they will have. So it's just great. No, yeah, definitely. But one thing for certain that really stood out to me about you, Sarah, is just, you know, how well your resume has aged. I feel like you've never shied away from challenges throughout your career. And much, I think, attributed to just the growth that you've had through where you train, your mindset for the fight game, and who you have around you. You know, at, at, at Team at Resilience Training Center, just the group of people you have around you, you know, the likes of Duke Didier, Alicia Smith, and a lot of other great fighters that are training out of Melbourne right now. I really feel like you guys don't shy away from taking on challenges. What's it been like to have, you know, have such an amazing core group of people around you and just to be able to call Resilience a home in the fight game? Yeah, I think it's been great. I think that um, all stems from our head coach, Daniel Kelly. He uh, was an older MMA fighter when he started his career and he never um, shied away from a hard fight. I mean, he fought um, ex-UFC champions and um, very hard-hitting uh, big guys. So I think uh, we're all just trying to follow in his footsteps and um, take whatever opportunity we can get. No, yeah, definitely. And just when we talk about that, Jim, you know, I mentioned two names that stand out, Duke Didier and Alicia Smith, you know, two amazing fighters that I don't feel like get talked about enough. And overall, just the Melbourne, the Melbourne mixed martial arts scene with Hex and what they've been able to do in recent memory. It's been great to see. What do you kind of make of just not just the overall growth of Australia and MMA, but specifically in Melbourne and in Victoria as a whole, just the overall evolution of the sport with Hex really growing their, you know, growing their wings in and establishing kind of a grassroots location, but also, you know, gyms like Absolute MMA, you've got Infinite MMA Ballar in Ballarat, you know, a lot of great gyms in the Melbourne area. What do you make of just the growth of the sport in Melbourne? Yeah, it's been massive and I'm impressed with your local Melbourne knowledge. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many people um, fighting out of Melbourne at the moment and it's awesome and like we're going to like there's a fight show on almost uh every weekend here which is great we got uh demolition this weekend um my partner is fighting um for an amateur title so there's just fights all the time in Melbourne and it's really good no, yeah, definitely. And just the overall scene right now with what Hex have been able to do, it's been great to see. And I know you had a fight for Hex. What's it been like for you to just, just see the growth that, that that Hex has had, you know, really spurting into a major player in the Australian MMA regional MMA show scene? You know, they, they've come a long way, I feel like, since you last fought from. What do you kind of make of just the growth that you've seen from Hex? Well, in the last couple of years, I believe Hex um, has new owners. So the new owners are really putting on like huge productions. They're putting heaps of money into the show. And I feel like, um, yeah, Aussies are getting like that good, like international big show experience, but at home. So it's really good for them. No, yeah, definitely. And one thing that stands out to me about you, Sarah, is just, you know, you don't shy away from standing out and helping a lot of the other up and coming Aussies, especially in the gym. You're definitely a resource for these younger fighters to come to. And you've established kind of like a leadership role in the space, especially for, you know, a lot of the other young women that are coming up from Australia. You've really, I think, you know, you talk about not feeling like you've had a part in the space, but it feels like I feel like every fighter has had their almost unique footprint on the growth in Australia. What do you make of just being able to take that leadership role on, given your years of, you know, judo experience, you know, your your combat sports experience, and being able to serve as that resource for the younger generation? I mean, I wish we had more younger girls in the gym at the moment, but unfortunately, my gym is very uh, male dominant. We don't have many girls coming up. So um, if more girls want to come and join and I'll happily um, be a leader to them. But um, no, I try and help the uh, younger guys as much as I can, corner them at um, shows and stuff and just try and help and grow our gym. Um, I spend like 90% of my life inside the gym. So um, I need them to help me train. They need me. Um, 
yeah, it's a good relationship. We've got to help each other out. No, yeah, definitely. And I know for you, the excitement of just the sport, the sport and being able to really make the most of every opportunity has been something that you've strived to really have throughout your career in mixed martial arts. I know for you, a big part of it, and I say this all the time, you know, one of the biggest rewards of being a mixed martial artist is the amount of places you get to travel. And it feels like ever since you've joined, you know, Bellator and even in the merger, you know, you've been able to travel to a lot of really cool places, train mixed martial arts, compete in, under the bright lights. And, you know, that's one of the best experiences. What's it been like for you to be able to have those opportunities, to be able to travel? travel to so many different unique countries train combat sports and you know ultimately be able to fight in front of new fans every time yeah it's been amazing i do love traveling so back when i did judo i'd travel the world all the time um well overseas like maybe 50 percent of the year um and then when i gave up judo it was kind of a relief because um traveling is exhausting um and then when i got signed with bellator and i got to travel again it was actually really exciting and I'm not away as much with MMA, like two to three times a year, which I think is perfect. Um, and yeah, I love it. So every time we go to Europe, we make sure we have a little holiday afterwards just because it's so far to go. Um, but yeah, it's been a great experience getting to travel the world. I would like PFL to come to Australia though. That would be nice to have a home crowd no, to yeah. cheer for me. But a Dublin crowd that boos me. <laughs> no, yeah, I was literally about to say that the next question I actually had was, you know, we've heard a lot of rumblings. You know, it, it feels like it's it's become a meme at this point almost a little bit, just a, a little bit amongst the, the Australian fa fans and just the Australian MMA community of like this PFL Australia that could be potentially coming to Australia in the near future. I wanted to ask you, what would the prospect of maybe fighting on a PFL Australia or Bellator in Australia mean to you, given now we're seeing a lot more Aussies going over uh, since the merger. You know, you have Chelsea Hackett, Rob Wilkinson, uh, you know, who are fighting uh, and they're managed by Dime Sports Group and they've they've done really good things in the PFL. And then also, you know, just in Bellator, Arlene Blanco and yourself who've really stood out amongst the pack. What would it mean yeah. for you to potentially fight for Bellator or PFL in Australia with the new merger that seems like a real possibility? Oh, it'd be amazing because I don't get to have my friends and family come watch me in Europe or America. It's just too expensive. So, and all the people from my gym, I'd love to have a card in Melbourne or even Sydney, just anywhere in Australia where all my friends and family can come and watch would be awesome. No, yeah, definitely. And just to, to beat the jet lag, especially, you know, not having to travel, not having to travel and have to have that 12 hour overlap either between states or between the UK. But yeah, regardless of that, you know, Sarah, I want to thank you so much for your time, for the quick opportunity to chat. I feel like, you know, what you've been able to do in, in your short time in mixed martial arts thus far, it's been great to see, you know, 5-0 and as a professional, and it feels like every win that you've had has been great. You know, still some of the wins that stand out, Sinead Kavanaugh, Pam Sorensen, you know, Jamie Edenden, who I actually just spoke to earlier, you know, she had nothing but high praise to say about you and just that matchup. And then even, you know, Annie Thatcher, your resume speaks for itself. And, you know, I know that you pride yourself on wanting to be active. And that's been a major theme for you is just wanting to fight a lot more than you have. Uh, you know, talk to me a little bit about your goals for 2024 thus far. Now that we're just about halfway through the year and a message to the supporters at home. Um, so the rest of 2024, well, Bellator hasn't really got that many more shows planned, but um, there are a couple at the end of the year. October in Chicago, I'd love to get on that card. Um, and I think there's one in November, I can't remember. But yeah, October would be perfect to fight again at the end of this year. Um, but yeah, that's all my plans for the rest of the year is just to train and fight and make the most of the time I have. No, yeah, definitely. And to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Sarah Collins versus Olena Kolesnik on the upcoming Bellator Challenger Series card. It is going to be a card that it produces, I think, some great moments. And do be sure to check out Sarah's upcoming fight on there. It's been me, Dan, from Fightwave. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the interview. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I will be linking Sarah's social medias in the description down below. Do be sure to check her out, support your local fighter, and have a great day, guys.